Hey guys, we have over 100 Microsoft updates, security patches and hotfixes for Windows 98, all on a single CD with an automated installer. And unlike other service packs, these are only official updates from Microsoft, nothing third party or modified. You can grab the ISO image from the Internet Archive, link down below in the video description and the contributor is Chaos Hacker. He uploaded this ISO in August of 2024. There is some information here and we will go over the readme file in a short while, but I do want to point out this interesting detail. There is a mentioning of updating the Windows 98 network stack by using a Windows XP disk Service Pack 3, preferably, I want to try that out. And also you can update the mouse and input stack by installing the Microsoft IntelliPoint 4.1 pack. I will also try that. And again, all download links down below in the video description. So let's switch over to my retro PC and see what the installation process is like. Here are all the devices in Device Manager. So all the drivers are loaded, ready to go. And in terms of hardware, we've got an Athlon 64, DirectX 7, 512 megabytes of RAM, a Radeon 9200, we've got a Sound Blaster Live, and I'm using a fast SSD with around 60 gigabytes. In the README file, there is a lot of information, so I highly recommend that you read this carefully. The key points are this is a community sourced collection of official Microsoft updates, security patches, and hotfixes. How to use, we need to run the install batch file from within the updates folder. And then after the installation, it mentions here to have a look in the updates options folder. Then it mentions here something about a patches folder and down here a components folder. So we'll have a look at those after the installation. Known issues, it mentions here that the installation can get stuck and then you should run the installer a second time. And also it is recommended that the updates folder to be copied to the hard drive. So yes, we will be doing that. And then it mentions here that we should run the installer from the Windows Explorer and not from the MS-DOS prompt. So I'm gonna copy all these files onto the hard drive. So let's go into updates and run install. Proceed with the installation? Yes. Press any key to continue. I'm going to say yes to Windows Media Player 7.1. And I'm also going to say yes to Internet Explorer 5.5 Service Pack 2. Press any key to continue. And off it goes. And here's our first reboot. That was the first reboot and it's continuing the installation. Second reboot. It's asking for the Windows 98 installation disk. Now I've copied this to my machine under W98. So be prepared, you will need those files. And then here we're getting a version conflict. So it's noticing that the files already installed are newer than the one it's trying to install. So you want to say yes, because we want the latest files installed on the computer. So I just keep pressing yes for all of these questions and another reboot. And we are back with more installations and another reboot. Off we go, more installations. We can see the specific programs that are being installed in this uh, DOS box, followed by another reboot. Okay, it's now installing Windows Media Player 7.1. Yes, I would like to continue. I agree to the terms and off it goes. Next, I have read the privacy statement, next. Yep, let's install everything, good to go. We, I'll leave everything at default. Next, next, off it goes and finish for another reboot. 
Do we want to install a codec package? Let's go for it. I'm gonna install everything that is being offered. Next, upgrade new components only, reinstall all components. Let's, let's leave the default option. Yep, everything, next, next, finish, and another reboot. And we are back, let's see what's in store next. Yes, it is Internet Explorer. Yes, I accept the terms. Next, install now, typical setup components or minimal. Let's go with the recommended options. Finish, and another reboot. And we are back, updating system settings. More updates are underway. Microsoft VM. Okay, installation complete. After restarting, remember checking the options folder. Press any key to continue. Here we go. Let's have a look. I can see, yeah, new icon, the Windows Media Player. Outlook Express. Okay, I haven't seen or heard of that one in a long time. So let's have a look in the updates folder and then options. We have something here, let's check it out. It's a security patch for Microsoft front page server extensions. So I don't have front page installed, so I don't think I will be needing that. And let's check out the components folder. There are many programs that we can install. Let's say you wanna play Nglide to play some Voodoo 3D effects games, you will need DirectX 9. Usually I don't recommend doing that. Usually DirectX 7 is more suitable, but let's just pretend we are in such a situation because I just wanna show you what the process is. So let's install DirectX 9 and this shouldn't take too long and always, as always followed by a reboot. There you go, that's all installed. We can check by running the DX diagnostic utility. We should see the version number here, DartX9. And next, there are some updates, I believe. DartX9 updates. Let's run this one. That was quick. And now I wanna check out updating the network stack. So. It mentions I need to mount a Windows XP Service Pack 3 disk. Here we go, I just mounted the disk and then we need to go click on perform additional tasks, set up a home or small office network, press yes, and then it's asking for a reboot. Welcome to the network setup wizard. Next, next, uh, computer, I don't have an internet connection. Next, yep, that's fine. I'll leave everything with the default options. Yeah, again, version conflict, just press yes for every time you see such a pop-up. And yes, another restart, you guessed right. And finally, I wanna install this Microsoft IntelliPoint software. Next, let's have a look, select your region, accept the agreement. Okay, what mouse do I have? Let's say basic mouse, that's fine. Next, I don't want to register. Next, finish. And yes, another reboot. And here we go, I think this is the last final step. Select a mouse, well, I'm not quite sure what I should choose here. Let's just go with optical mouse, that's what I have. Next, 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 next. Well, it's got lots of information. I think this is just information, so yeah, I think that's it all patches and all, all the software installed, ready to go. And here we have 3D Mark 2000 running. That's just a very basic test. I do feel for gaming to recommend this update CD. A lot of testing uh, needs to happen. And that's my idea to 
share this with the community, give it a try on your retro PC, but do take an image of your hard drive just in case something goes wrong. So guys, we have watched the entire installation process and for me, yeah, everything worked just fine. A couple of observations. You will definitely need the Windows 98 installation CD or have the setup files copied to your hard drive. Also, the machine will reboot many times and we are getting quite a few messages about version conflicts. When you see those, hit the yes button in order to keep the very latest files with your installation. I liked how it didn't force a newer version of DirectX, so I could manually select which version I wanted to install. And I really didn't notice anything off or anything that didn't work. I only tested a few benchmarks and games afterwards, so more testing is needed and I hope this is where us as a community, we can give this a try on our retro gaming PCs and report any feedback. And maybe in the future, there will be an updated version. In general, for gaming, I stick with the vanilla Windows 98 SE and DirectX 7, but maybe you are trying to play more modern games from the XP era and that might require some updated files or maybe you're doing something totally different with your machine and here the Microsoft updates come in very handy. If you want to give this a go, I recommend you take an image of your hard drive because you never know, things can go wrong. So whatever disk imaging software you're using, take uh, a snapshot and if anything goes wrong, you can just restore your system back to how it was. And a big thank you to the person that put this disc together. The retro PC community is fantastic. There's always something new that's happening and many people working on little projects behind the scenes. And yeah, for me, I love testing these out and sharing it with you, spreading the love, spreading the news. So yeah, give this a try. I think this could become a very important project for us. And yeah, that's it for me for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your thoughts down below in the video comments and I shall see you soon with another one.